calm is as strong as a spell I'll never tell Hi guys, welcome back to Exmo Lex. I am so excited for today's video and you might be able to tell why. I'll come in a little bit closer in case you haven't figured it out yet. I got my nose pierced. On Saturday morning, a friend and I went out for coffee and then spontaneously got our noses pierced and it was the best. My friend filmed it for me, so I'm gonna put that footage later on in this video. And of course, I'll put a warning before I show it just in case anybody's squeamish and they don't wanna see that. But uh, because of that, I wanna talk about piercings this week. Mormon Church has a whole lot of thoughts about piercings and some of them are honestly so ridiculous that it's funny. I'm also trying out a new filming location this week. Let me know what you think, but if you hate it, keep that opinion to yourself. My plants are sensitive. But before we really dive into the video, first, I want to introduce you to today's sponsor, Apostate Coffee. I've been working with Apostate Coffee for a while. I think they are absolutely fantastic. The coffee is genuinely delicious, and this is coming from somebody who up until about a year ago didn't drink coffee at all. They have a bunch of different roasts to choose from and all of them have really funny Exmo names. They've got mugs, they have travel mugs, they have t-shirts, they have all sorts of cool stuff, especially if you're an ex-Mormon. Personally, my favorite way to have it is to make a mocha. I did this video a few months back where I showed me like trying out all these different coffees. Um, so if you wanna see that, check this one out. I absolutely love apostate coffee. It is a staple in my home. And if you guys wanna try it, you can use the code XMOLEX to get 10% off. And that not only supports an Exmo owned business, it also supports this channel. So consider trying apostate coffee. All right, let's jump into this content. <laughs> Now, if you grew up in the Mormon church, you already know that piercings and tattoos are highly discouraged. Strangely enough, the church thinks it's fine if women have one pair of earrings, just one in each earlobe. In fact, I'm gonna read you what the church's website says about it. Under body piercing, Latter-day prophets strongly discourage the piercing of the body except for medical purposes. If girls or women desire to have their ears pierced, they are encouraged to wear only one pair of modest earrings. Those who choose to disregard this counsel show a lack of respect for themselves and for God. They will someday regret their decision. The Apostle Paul taught of the significance of our bodies and the danger of purposely defiling them. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Pretty straightforward, right? It's okay for women to have one pair of earrings and that's it. No tattoos, no extra piercings anywhere on the body, including any more on the ears. So I grew up in Utah County. Obviously, everybody around me took this rule super seriously. I'm sure I myself made obnoxious comments about other people having tattoos and piercings. But deep down, secretly, I did like a lot of them. I always loved when people had their helix pierced, which is these ones up at the top. And one of the first things I did after I left the church was go and get a double helix piercing. Followed shortly thereafter by a second piercing on each earlobe and then eventually a conch piercing on my right ear. And then like three days ago, a nose piercing. Now, while I was looking for more information about how the church feels about tattoos and body piercings, I came across the most ridiculous New Era article. The New Era is a magazine geared towards youth of the church, and this article about tattoos and piercings is just, I just have to read you parts of it, probably a lot of it, because I think you'll laugh. It's honestly that ridiculous. Fads and fashions come and go. Recently, practices like tattooing and body piercing have become popular. The trends of tattooing and body piercing, as with other worldly fashions, are not long lasting. <laughs> Although the marks or scars they leave on the body are often permanent. These worldly fads are practices that members of the church should choose to avoid because they don't complement an attitude of respect toward our earthly bodies as the scriptures and prophets teach. Of course, those who have had tattoos prior to joining the church have no need to feel embarrassed. I'm sorry, but how could you not read this as somebody who joined the church with tattoos and not feel embarrassed about it. You are going to get so much judgment from members of the church if you have tattoos or body piercings, even if you got them before you joined. This type of attitude, and just wait, it gets worse. This type of attitude is going to cause anybody to feel embarrassed by it. As a pediatrician, Dr. Ray Thomas of Salt Lake City must treat his young patients who have had medical problems that result from tattooing and body piercing. When I was in medical school, I had the assignment to surgically remove tattoos of any young people who came through the county hospital and wanted them removed. Almost universally, it seemed, they got them as a whim. I found that within the three years of getting a tattoo, people universally wanted them off. 
So this guy is a pediatrician, which, may I remind you, treats children, and he's practicing in Utah. Primarily in 2001, I'm sure that most of his clients were Mormons, and they were under 18. Of course a young Mormon and or their parent is gonna wanna get a tattoo removed. Would you expect anything different with the amount of judgment they're getting for it? And I'm sure that most of their parents didn't sign off on it. Obviously they're gonna wanna get it removed. Dr. Mark Taylor, a dermatologist in Salt Lake City, sees patients who want to have tattoos removed. Dr. Taylor indicates that the laser process is expensive and that certain tattoo colors cannot be removed very easily. He finds it unfortunate that something done on a whim, almost like doodling, yeah, hundreds of dollars worth of doodling, now costs time, money, energy, and pain to remove. Tattoos connote, in my opinion, says Dr. Taylor, a lack of judgment, a lack of forethought, lack of being able to see into the future and understand consequences. As a member of the church, Dr. Taylor is concerned. There it is. The dude is a Mormon. Of course he is. As a member of the church, Dr. Taylor is concerned about the spiritual consequences his patients have had to face. It's not your business as a doctor. Their spiritual consequences are not your business. If you wear anything on your body that discourages the presence of the spirit, that conveys a message of disobedience or rebellion, says Dr. Taylor. It becomes discouraging to spirituality. You either speak as a Mormon or as a doctor. I really don't think you should be doing both at the same time. It's not your business. Having a tattoo or body piercing can also be offensive to others. Employers may not want an employee representing his business who has tattoos or body piercings. As members of the church, we are instructed not to give offense. People taunt others by these outward acts, says Dr. Taylor. A pure body, unmarked, is not offensive. Hold the phone! <laughs> they literally just said that if you have tattoos and body piercings, especially as a member of the church, if you get a tattoo or you get body piercings, you are committing an outward act of offense towards others. A pure body unmarked is not offensive. I'm sorry, but bodies are just not offensive. Your body, regardless of tattoos, regardless of body piercings or scars or stretch marks or the weight that you have or anything is not offensive. A body is not offensive. Some members of a congregation may be distracted from the reverent feelings they come to church services to gain by the piercings or tattoos of those called upon to bless or pass the sacrament or participate in the program. Oh my God. Just a few paragraphs ago, we were saying that if, if you got tattooed or pierced before you became a member of the church, that you have nothing to be embarrassed about. And then just a little while later, other people are going to be so distracted by your tattoos that they can't feel the spirit at church. How are people supposed to feel? How is a member of the church who joined after getting tattoos supposed to feel when this is the message they're receiving? Dr. Taylor has come up with two questions that are good to ask before undertaking any sort of fad. Will it make me feel differently or negatively about myself? Will it make other people feel differently about me? If the answer is yes to either question, then it's probably not a good idea to do it. <gasps> Hold the phone. I'm so mad about that. Will it make me feel differently or negatively about myself? Let me answer this question for my own piercings. Every single one of my piercings, I like them. I wouldn't have got them if I didn't like them. They make me feel happy. I look in the mirror, I see them and I'm like, oh, mm, cute. Second question. Will it make other people feel differently about me? Listen, it doesn't matter. What a concept. And to be honest with you, if somebody in my life looked at me differently in a negative way because I got my nose pierced, I don't want that person in my life. Take me as I am or watch me as I go. I'm not gonna be disrespected or treated differently or talked down to for something that is so insignificant. <laughs> for example, a woman having pierced ears does not make me think differently of her. However, for men, it makes me feel differently about them if I see them with pierced ears. Hold up, again, that is a you problem, my friend. Having a little hole in each ear is okay if you're a woman, but not okay if you're a man. <laughs> I'm beyond words, beyond words. The thing that I keep thinking about this that is so funny to me is that this was written in 2001. The church still definitely has really similar thoughts about it. It's only 20 years ago, but 
I mean, decades ago, the church used to have really strong feelings about like playing cards as well. And I feel like in the next 50 years, this kind of thing isn't gonna matter anymore. There are already a lot of young Mormons that are choosing to either get tattoos, that are choosing to get extra piercings in their ears because it's not that big of a deal and because they don't feel it affects their relationship with God. I think eventually the church is gonna stop caring about dumb stuff like this because they see that people are thinking about this and going, hmm, it's really judgmental to judge people and think less of people because they're decorating their body when it's their body. Wait till you hear this next part too. The biggest danger from body piercing or tattoos may not be the object itself. The biggest danger is where these things can lead. Will this pull you into situations that you should avoid? Will it introduce you to a circle of friends that are better left alone, such as a gang? President Gordon B. Hinckley addressed the fads of tattooing and piercing in our last general conference. Now comes the craze of tattooing one's body. I cannot understand why any young man, or young woman for that matter, would wish to undergo the painful process of disfiguring the skin with various multicolored representations of people, animals, and various symbols. With tattoos, the process is permanent, unless there is another painful and costly undertaking to remove it. A tattoo is graffiti on the temple of the body. Likewise, the piercing of the body for multiple rings in the ears, in the nose, even in the tongue. Can they possibly think that is beautiful? It is a passing fancy, but its effects can be permanent. Can they possibly think that is beautiful? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> All right, now I have one more story to tell you before I show you the footage of me getting my nose pierced. When I was 17, and I believe this was probably on the night of my high school, like senior graduation party thing. Uh, a friend and I wanted to be rebellious. We were both Mormon and we loved lip piercings. So my friend and I decided let's pierce our own lips. We didn't have any money. I worked like a part-time job making $7.25 an hour. I wasn't about to go pay for it. Uh, so we decided we could do it ourselves. On the night of our senior graduation party, I believe in my bathroom, we got a pack of ice, a big old sewing needle, and I pierced my own lip with the sewing needle. I think it was right here. <laughs> I managed to do that somehow. It hurt really bad, and I have to say, do not do that. <laughs> if you wanna get a body part pierced, go to a professional, please. It is so traumatic for your body to just have a needle shoved through. If you go to a professional, they have tools that are meant for this that are gonna do so much less damage. If I can find some photos of me with that lip ring, I will put them on the screen. It probably lasted like four or five days. I'm actually glad I decided to take that one out because I've decided it's probably not my favorite look. I mean, I don't even have a scar or anything. You can't tell I ever had it. But I'm really glad that now I'm smart enough to go to a professional and get it done because shoving a needle through your skin is not how you're supposed to do it. Go to a tattoo and piercing parlor and have a professional do it. I'm begging you. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the nose piercing and then I'll show you the footage. I have been toying with the idea of getting my nose pierced for probably about a year. Um, if you follow me on TikTok, you probably saw me last year wearing a whole lot of fake piercings in my nose because I just wanted to try it out and see how it felt and see if it, I would like it. Um, and for a long time, I really couldn't commit to actually getting the piercing. I was afraid it was gonna hurt, obviously. And then I was just nervous about I don't know, the judgment from family members. And you know, all of my family members are Mormon and it's the type of thing that I would have judged somebody for just like 10 years ago. And I didn't want people to look at me differently for having a piercing. But I was talking to my friend about it when we were hanging out on Friday night and we were each showing each other when we had worn fake nose rings and we were both gushing like, oh my God, you look so cute, you should really get it. And then the next day we were supposed to have a coffee date. <laughs> so when we were texting that morning to try to choose a place, I kind of jokingly texted, we should go get nose rings. And I, I wasn't like serious about it, but we ended up doing it. <laughs> It was so much fun to go with a friend. So if you are considering getting a piercing, I like highly recommend going with a friend. It is so much more fun. <laughs> so we both did it together. I was so nervous about it, but honestly, I have to tell you the pain is minimal. I have eight piercings now. The most 
Painful was the conch piercing. That's a really thick piece of cartilage that they have to get through and took a long time to heal and it did hurt quite a lot. Um, the helix piercings also were more painful but really not that bad. It is still a pretty flexible piece of cartilage. It's not super thick. It hurt but it wasn't horrible. And then the piercings, the second piercings I have on my lobes, I got those done like two years ago. You hardly feel it. It's just really, really quick. It's not too bad. The nose, I would also say really not too bad. I was really nervous about it, but I have to say not super painful. It was really, really quick. I mean, she, you'll see the footage. She got that thing in there and done within like 10 seconds. It was really fast. I'm on day three now. Um, it's not painful. I can touch it. I can move it around when I clean it. You know, I, it just, it doesn't hurt. It's not bad and it's healing up really nicely. You can't even tell that it's fresh. So I'm going to say 10 out of 10. Here's the footage of me getting my nose pierced. If you're squeamish and you don't want to see it, click to this timestamp to miss the piercing part in three, two, one, roll the tape. That's my nose. <laughs> Disfigured. Disfigured. So no matter what we do, anytime we mess with the nose, it makes ice water. I'll give you that, it works a little bit better on the sleeve of your shirt. Okay, thank you. Oh my god, I can't believe we're doing this. I'm gonna clean the surface of the skin, okay, so I'm just gonna look for the natural curve of your nostril. Okay. We want to keep it in a nice, slight, nice soft crease, because that skin's pliable, so it holds the jewelry a lot easier and it's not fighting against your, your skin and your tissue. Right. Okay, remember I can move it. It is a Sharpie dot, so it's easy to move a Sharpie dot. Look at that and let me know what you think. That's a good spot, right? That's what's let me see. And it'll work really well for a, no for a hoop later if you ever want to do a hoop. I do want to do a hoop. It kind of will just cup along that little natural edge of your nostril. You are currently a non-pierced nose person and you're about to become a pierced nose person. <laughs> you got this. You got this all. I'm going to put a cork right here. Okay. It catches the needle, keeps you and I both safe. You're gonna feel my finger on your forehead and I'm gonna come over the top and we're gonna go on. One, two, and three. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Let me see here, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, turn towards me just a smidge. Thank you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was not bad at all. Oh, really? I told you way better than here. Yeah. Uh, the conch is the worst one. That hurt like hell. That wasn't bad. Oh my god! What's up, little dude? Do you like it? I'm gonna spin you around and get the good light. There she is. So yeah, tell me what you guys think. If you hate it, um, you can go ahead and not say anything because I'm a sensitive little soul and it might hurt my feelings. But I'm really, really happy with it. And they told me in six weeks I can change this out for a hoop. And I'm definitely going to do that because I really love the way hoops look. Huge shout out to a piercer, Heidi. She has done most of my other piercings, I think, except my conch. And she does a fabulous job. I've never had any issues with them getting infected. She gives me really excellent advice on all of them. If you live in the Boise area and you want to get a piercing or a tattoo, I recommend tattoo and tattoo that's where I get all of my piercings and one of my best friends works there as a tattoo artist he has done three of my tattoos and they are all beautiful and I love them so thank you Peter and you guys go ahead and leave me a comment let me know how you feel about tattoos and body piercings both before and after leaving the church if you were never a member how do you feel about how judgmental the church is about these types of things let me know what your favorite piercing or tattoo is and let me know if you ever want to see a similar video to this except for centered more around around tattoos rather than around piercings because I have some future plans for more tattoos as well. Special thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel. You guys are the absolute best. An extra special thank you to Brett Fairborn, Craig Call, Doug Davis, Mormonland, The Guiltiest Place on Earth, Jason Wilkins, Noble Monster Comics, Tans, and the Exmo Candle Company for supporting at the Demon Tier on my Patreon. It means so much to me, you guys. If you would like to support the channel, you can find links to do so in the description below. Also remember, if you use the code XMOLEX at checkout at apostatecoffee.com, you can get 10% off while supporting this channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Never revealing no secrets you're keeping These promises strong as a spell I'll never tell Yeah, I like you, that's for sure